What's up, coders? I'm Kehlani, and I'm your host for Code Along with Black Girls Code. Today, we're making something super cool, a rotating face filter in Scratch. You know those funny filters where you can switch between hats, glasses, and other silly effects? Well, today, we're coding that. We'll also learn all about the basics of AI in Scratch. Ready to get started? Let's go. Before we get to coding, Make sure to like this video and subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you're new to Code Along and Scratch, make sure to check out this video to learn how to make an account. It's also a great episode to review if you need some help learning the basics in Scratch. Imagine your computer has a really smart helper. This helper is called AI, or artificial intelligence, and it helps your computer learn and make decisions, just like you learn new things at school. One way to use AI is through machine learning. Machine learning is a special kind of learning where the computer practices over and over again, just like you might practice riding a bike or playing a video game over and over to get better at it. With the face sensing extension, the computer's AI learns how to see faces by looking at lots of pictures of people. Then it uses this skill to do fun things like placing an image on your nose or your ear. It's like teaching your computer how to play Simon Says, but instead of words, it watches your face. Cool, right? This way you can create amazing projects where your face becomes part of the game or story. The face sensing extension is still being tested by the Scratch team, so we'll need to use the Scratch Lab website to access it. Let's go to lab.scratch.mit.edu and select face sensing. After, click try it out to access the Scratch Lab editor. We won't be able to share our projects to the main Scratch site, but don't worry, I'll show you how we can still save our work at the end of the project. First things first, let's brainstorm some ideas for our different filter options. Think about some of those funny filters you see on your phone. Do you have any that you really like? Maybe it's a fancy hat or a silly mustache or a filter that makes you look like an animal with ears and whiskers. For our project today, we'll create three different filter options. It's okay if each filter has multiple components, we'll create separate sprites for those. Here are the filters I'm going to use in my project. A silly hat, sunglasses and hoop earrings, cat ears and whiskers, and a rainbow mouth. What filters will you use in your project? Now that we have an idea for our filters, let's get to designing. Let's delete the scratch cat sprite by clicking the trash can icon. Let's add a new sprite by clicking on the cat icon. For my first filter, I have four parts. A hat, glasses, left earring, and right earring. I'm going to use sprites from the fashion section of the gallery for the hat and glasses. In the Costumes tab, delete the costumes you won't be using. For each sprite, I need to do a few things. Position the image approximately where it should be on my face, rename the sprite, and set it to hide once I've finished the design. For my hat sprite, I'm going to replace the S with the K for Kehlani. Then I'll reposition the sprite so it's slightly above the center of the canvas since it'll be placed on top of my head. Finally, click the hide icon. On my sunglasses, I'm going to play with the fill tool color and gradient to make the sprite pop. These should mostly be in the center of the canvas since they're placed in the center of your face. Remember to hide the sprite. Then I'll create a new sprite for the left earring by hovering over the cat icon and clicking on the paint tool. I'm going to use the circle tool to draw a hoop earring, then update its fill and outline colors. I'm going to position the sprite slightly below the center canvas. Now I'm going to duplicate the left earring sprite and rename it right earring. For my second filter, I'm going to need two sprites, cat ears and cat whiskers. I'm going to select the scratch cat from the gallery and use it as my template for both. On the first sprite, I'm going to use the erase tool to remove the rest of the scratch cat's body, sorry scratch cat, so that all that's left are the cat ears. I'll position these slightly above the center so that it sits on my head like a headband. On the second sprite, I'm going to copy the scratch cat's nose.
Then use the brush tools to draw whiskers. The sprite should be positioned right in the center of the canvas. For my last filter, I'm going to draw the rainbow mouth with the paint tool. While in the costumes tab, click on the sprite icon and then paint to create a blank sprite. I'm going to use the rectangle tool to draw different colors right next to each other. I'm going to play with the color gradient to make the colors look like they're blending together. Then I'll use the erase tool to smooth out the bottom of the rectangles and position the image just below the center of our canvas. And voila, our filters are ready to be coated. I'm going to start by clicking on the first sprite in my first filter, the hat sprite. Click on the code tab, then drag out a when green flag clicked block from events. Open control and drag a forever loop underneath. Because our sprite is hidden, we need to show it. From looks, drag a show block inside the forever loop. This code will run nonstop when the green flag is clicked. Time to make your sprite follow your face. Open face sensing at the bottom of the code menu and drag go to nose inside of the forever loop. This block makes your sprite stick to your face like glue. From the drop down, I'm going to select where on my face I'd like the sprite to appear. I'll select top of head for the hat sprite. This code is like magic. It tells the sprite to go wherever your face goes. Click the green flag, then move your head around and watch the sprite follow you. Let's drag our chunk of code to the other sprites in our first filter, the glasses and earring sprites. I'm going to update the position of each sprite based on where I'd like them to appear on my face. I'll select between eyes for the glasses sprite, left ear for the left earring, and right ear for the right earring. Let's make it even cooler. We can customize our sprites based on the direction we're facing and the size of our face on screen. I'm going to return to my hat sprite, then open face sensing and drag out point in direction of face tilt and set size to face size blocks. Now your sprite will not only follow your face, but also rotate when you tilt your head. Let's add the same two code blocks to the other three sprites in our first filter. Before we can rotate through our filters on the screen, let's add the same chunk of code to the sprites in filters two and three. I'm going to drag this chunk of code to the cat ear, cat whiskers, and rainbow mouth sprites. Don't forget, we need to update the position of each sprite so that it appears in the correct spot on our faces. For the cat ears, I'll select top of head. For whiskers, I'm going to select nose. And for rainbow mouth, I'll select mouth. Now comes the fun part, rotating through your filters. We'll want to code it so that when you click a sprite or press a key, the filters change. But how will the computer know which filter to show next? Hmm. That's where a variable comes in. Think of a variable like a special storage box in your code. We can use it to keep track of which number filter is showing on the screen so the computer always knows what to do next. Click the stage on the bottom right of the editor. Then open events and drag out another when green flag clicked block. In the variables tab, click make a variable, then type filter in the text box. This variable is like a remote control. It remembers which filter is on so we can switch between them. Drag a set filter to zero block underneath when green flag clicked. We'll keep the variable set to zero so that no filter is shown right when the project starts. Right now, all the filters show up at the same time when the green flag is clicked. That's a little messy, right? Let's make it look cooler by using an if else block to help the computer decide what to do. We'll also use a math block to do some quick calculations. These blocks will help us control when each filter shows up based on a number we set. Let's return to the hat sprite in our first filter. Open control and drag out an if then else conditional. Click the operators tab and drag a value equals 50 block inside the if condition. From variables, drag a filter variable into the left side of the operator block and type one on the right side. This code will check whether the filter variable is set to one. If so, the hat sprite will be displayed on screen based on the user's face. 
open looks and drag a hide block inside the else condition. This will hide the hat sprite if the filter variable is not equal to one. If the filter number matches the current one, we'll make it appear. If not, we'll hide it. I'm going to add this code and the other sprites in the first filter and we'll keep the operator block set to one. Before we move on, there's still something we have to do. We need to add this code to the sprites in the second and third filters too. For the cat ears and cat whiskers sprites, I'm going to replace one in the operator block with a two. For the rainbow mouth sprite, I'm going to replace the one with three. Now each filter knows when it's their turn to shine. For example, when the filter variable is one, the glasses will show. Then when it's two, the cat will show. And at three, a rainbow. Now that we have code to check what the current value of the filter variable is, we need the code to actually change the variable's value to rotate between the filters. We can use events, like when a key is pressed, to update the value of a variable throughout a project. Return to the stage, then open events, and drag when space key pressed into the editor. Then open variables and drag change filter by one underneath. This will change to the next filter. This is the magic button. When you press the space bar, the filter changes. Try it out. When testing out the code, I notice that the filters stop appearing when the variable is greater than three. After the last filter is shown, I want to return to the beginning of the list so that no filter is displayed before showing filters one through three again. Let's update the code to reset the value of the filter variable after the last filter choice number three is displayed on the screen. To do this, I'll have to open control and drag an if conditional underneath change filter by one. Then open operators and drag a value greater than 50 block inside the if condition. From variables, drag a filter variable into the left side of the operator block, then change 50 to 3 on the right side. Open variables again and drag a set filter to 0 block inside the conditional. Now, if you go past the last filter, it loops back to the first one. Let's test out the project. Click the green flag, move your head, and press the space bar to switch between filters. It works! So cool! Today we created an awesome AI face filter by learning how to use face sensing extension blocks to make animated filters that interact with your face, use event blocks to trigger an action to happen in a project, use control blocks to set something to happen continuously, use looks blocks to show and hide different sprites on the screen, and use operator blocks to perform math functions in a project. Before we go, we have to save our work! Because we're working in the Scratch Lab, we can't publish our projects to the main site, but we can download them to our computers. Click on File in the top left of your screen, then select Save to your computer. Don't close out of your Scratch window until you've saved your work. If you ever want to make edits to your project, you can click Load from your computer and upload your downloaded file to update it. Whew, that was a lot of work, but I love the way my project turned out. I can't wait to see what kind of face filter you create. Thanks for coding along with me today. See you next time, coding besties.